This is an update on my Sentry Arm C93 Sporter. There was never a problem with this rifle functioning. Uh, the reason I sent it back to Sentry Arms was because the bolt gap was nowhere near within spec and I wanted that problem corrected while it was still under warranty so I didn't have to shoulder uh, the burden of paying for new parts. Uh, I, I had asked Sentry at that time to uh, correct the bolt gap. Um, I wanted it between the factory specs for the 223 of between 10 thousandths and 20 thousandths gap. Uh, when I got it back it was just barely within 10 thousandths and after shooting it it went down to 9 thousandths which to me is still acceptable. Uh, since then um, I'm not sure if that has gotten smaller. I'm going to measure that and I bought some brand new HK rollers I'm going to install those. These are uh, plus four rollers, so those are two sizes larger than the stock ones. Um, I did measure the rollers that were in here, and they are the standard size. So uh, the plus four should give me, a, um, I'm guessing, maybe about uh, four thousandths more gap. Uh, somewhere between two and four thousandths, I would think. So we'll see how that goes. I'll show you how I install the rollers, which is... Uh, really not that difficult a job at all. The first thing we'll do is check the existing bolt gap and uh, we uh, pull the charging handle all the way rearward, let her go, point it in safe direction, drive fire it, and now uh, with a set of feeler gauges I'm going to anticipate that this is around nine thousandths where it was and uh, we check right here. You work through the magazine well and the location of the bolt gap is between the carrier and the bolt head right here. Okay, the nine thousandths feeler gauge fits in there so my gap is still at nine thousandths of an inch, did not move. And now we'll disassemble and install those rollers. This locking piece is in excellent condition. Well, actually, after firing it a bit, uh, there are some marks starting to show there, but this thing looks like it's in excellent shape. And this is normally the first piece you would check, or uh, change rather, um, before changing the rollers, if you see wear on there. Okay, to get the rollers out, I'm going to use a 1 16th inch pin punch to drive this roll pin out. You drive it straight into the bolt head and you just tip the bolt head to get that out or it'll pop right on the bench there and turn the bolt head on its side. These are the stock rollers they have no markings right there and I'm going to replace them with these oversized plus four rollers and uh, different rollers have different markings. These particular ones have two hash marks on them. You take the roller plate, turn the bolt head upside down, lay it right in this groove here. Let it stick out on one side. There's a uh, recessed side of the roller. And there's a a little bump on each side of that plate. Set that right in there so it captures it. And then I use the pin and I push it out the other side just enough that you can see the other one. And 
and as soon as they're on there I just kind of hold them loosely together take the, the locking piece put it in there and put pressure on and that will center everything but you have to maintain pressure or they'll fall out like that so maintain pressure on the locking piece spin it over I'm going to set it down on the bench so I can get it started here and it should go in very easily and now we're ready to reassemble and check our bolt gap Put the locking piece into the bolt carrier and rotate it clockwise as you're facing it from this end. And the bottom of the bolt head is ramped right there. And that goes over this part here. And then you start rotating it. And before you get it all the way rotated, you pull it out so you've got about five millimeters a gap there right here otherwise your rollers will be forced out and uh, you're ready to put it back into the receiver Alright, then we'll do the same procedure. We'll pull back on the charge handle, let the action go forward, let it slam forward. Safe direction, drive fire. And let's find out how the plus four rollers improve our bolt gap from the standard rollers. Looks like it's going to be 13 thousandths. So we went from 9 to 13, that's 4 thousandths uh, from plus 4 rollers. Uh, and that's what I expected, so I'm really happy with this. Uh, I'll fire it and uh, we'll make sure it still functions flawlessly as it always has. So I just want to make this clear. People were wondering why I was messing with this rifle if it already functioned. Um, to answer that question uh, without getting into a real detailed discussion about how uh, bolt gap and the way the parts wear affects the timing of a roller locking action uh, that's beyond the scope of this uh, video but if you have a bolt gap that is too small eventually the rifle is going to malfunction um, it's indicative of a situation you want to correct before the problem occurs and like I said before I just wanted to get it corrected uh, under warranty instead of having to do it myself which ultimately I ended up doing anyway but uh, I'm okay with that these rifles are inexpensive enough that uh, they're actually a lot of fun it's a really nice looking rifle it's got a heck of a nice finish uh, all the furniture is in excellent condition and I'm very happy with it uh, no complaints at all.